Well, welcome to the candle making factory. I don't know, I've been roped into the kitchen to try and help the wife keep up with the orders. She's probably gonna regret this because she's given me the instructions on how to make these dipped candles. So let's see if we can make a couple before she gets back. Otherwise there might be all sorts of excitement. So as you, as you remember, I made me jolly extended saucepan so we can make some dipped candles. So first of all, you've got to get motivated and tie some nuts together. Metal nuts. <laughs> of course, it doesn't really have to be a nut, but it just seems to work because at least you've got a bigger hole to thread through, especially when you've got no eyes like me, at least you don't have to put your glasses on. And you just want to tie it around the bottom so you've got a bit of weight. That's if I can tie a knot. Golly gosh, I'm gonna have to go back to the Boy Scouts and ask them to teach me how to tie a knot, aren't I? Get around there, fumble fingers. I think I'm out of my comfort zone here. Golly gosh. This is the neat end of the journey. I mean, golly, I'm normally out in the shed trying to get the wax good enough to be accepted. If you're quick, you might be able to order the prize bush bee man dip candle. Well, I don't know if it'd be prized, it might be something. So apparently we gotta make it so that the string is long enough to go in our mortar shell. Oh, I don't know, that looks pretty good to me. <laughs> but I say no, we'll see what happens. Of course, now it wouldn't be like me to actually be doing anything sensible, would it? So I've, I've thought this is a bit too high for my poor old shoulders to be dipping candles. So I bought myself my own little table into the, into the apparatus. So either I'm going to be helping out or I'm going to be helped out the door. Because <laughs> that just depends. I'm in here raiding, raiding this show. But I'm actually trying to be helpful, but you know, sometimes when husbands try to be helpful, they're actually a jolly nuisance, aren't they? But anyway, we'll have a crack. So we're gonna bring our, our mortar shell over to the dipping station. I think that might be a little bit warm. Even for my old calloused hands, I think we'll cheat and get a tea towel. Do you reckon we'll make it over there without dropping it? Oh, shit. Wouldn't that be great? The wife comes home and there's wax all over a kitchen floor and no candles made. Straight to jail. <laughs> anyway, here we go. So when the R&D officer was first starting to make candles in the kitchen here, she had them all hanging on the kitchen knobs and on the drawer fronts and everything. And it was, I thought, I thought to myself that it was a little bit complicated. Bless her heart. So I went out to the shed and I knocked her up a bit of a candle stand. And I think I need to to be a little bit critiqued <laughs> and have a little bit of a review about how it works. But anyway, for the purpose of the exercise, here we are. The lovely lasses, she's done a, done a couple of experimental ones. Well, not experimental ones, more professional ones. <laughs> and so we'll see how close we get to how it's meant to look. Of course, this isn't just a little bit of any ordinary string. It's actually proper wick, candle wick. I was reading some history about beeswax candles. Well, not history, some information. Apparently they're the only candles that burn pure and don't actually put any uh, carbon into the air. And it'll, well not carbon, pollution into the air I should say, in your own home. So, and apparently it actually helps with your, um, does it, oh, not disease, um, asthma. Helps with asthma because it actually binds some of the dust together that's in your home and makes it settle out so you can vacuum it up and disappear out of the house. So there's another good reason to have a crack at making beeswax candles or buying one off me. Well, maybe not off of me. <laughs> we'll have to see if there's anywhere to buy if I'm in charge. Right, anyway, apparently we've got to dip them in here so they go down basically to the bottom. So I'm thinking that's going to be entertaining in itself. Here we go. Go. Are we ready? Blue. How do you know when you're at the bottom? Like, oh. Golly gosh. What's that doing? Should I got that out of the way? I've dipped that bit in as well. Stop it! Get up there! Oh, shit. <laughs> That's already in trouble. Surely I can't muck it up this early in the process. I think I've gone a bit deep, lad. Oh. I don't know. Do you hang them up to cool off for a minute? Is that three? You're counting? <laughs> we'll put it over here on a special cooling rack. Golly gosh. I guess in summer we'd have to put the air conditioning on. In the minute it's quite chilly. <sighs> Apparently. 
know the Catholic Church used beeswax candles right up until just recently. Maybe they do at the Vatican. Though. Maybe they still use them, but I don't know. I haven't been to the Vatican. I'll just let it drip a bit. I don't know. The nuts don't seem to be getting too much wax on them. It's fiddling up a bit, though. Golly gosh. I think we're going to have to get the wife to make an instructional video. <laughs> oh, the next project apparently we've got to do is make some bees wax wraps. Oh, my goodness me. And let's just put them over here and let them cool again on my patented new box beeswax candle cooler offerer. <laughs> At least you can't say I'm not into recycling, can you? I mean, you know, I thought that was the perfect height, the little newt box, a couple of old bee bars that I'm not gonna use. Although I think I'm gonna change it and go back out and I might make it so as it can have four on there. They can have two either side. Because my original thought was you could put them forward, but I didn't think through because it actually is a bit awkward to get the cooling ones from the back to the front. Because I thought you could have them stacked along here, but see what happens when you actually start doing a project, you get a bit of a different feel for it. But anyway, it's a step up from the door knobs, or the cupboard knobs, so we're, we're getting there. I'm doing well so far, but apparently now we've got to remove our nuts. And I like the fact there's no expense spared here. We've got the little baby kindergarten scissors. Maybe that's I can't do too much damage. I'm just trying to figure out how far up. I guess you just cut the nut off. I don't know. You can't really cut through the nut, can you? God. Okay. <laughs> Goodness me. Is that what happens? I do do. Heck, hang on, get rid of some of this wax off here. Oh, that's actually still quite warm. Hmm. Yeah, right. So you have to let it sit around for a little while, I reckon, to get organized. I think we're doing all right. I'm a bit, I'm a bit scared now, because it's actually going okay, so. <sighs> You're doing a good job, otherwise I might have to do this more often. Are we ready? Take it out. Bloody hell, I better go and ask the boss and see how I got on. What do you reckon, champ? How did I go? Oh, she's giving me the thumbs up, so that's all good. Well, well, I might be in the candle factory a bit more. But the sun's shining out there, I'm getting the hankering for a bee box. But anyway, that's the go, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, I'm a jack of all trades, master of half of them. So we'll just leave them there to rest for a little bit because they're still pretty warm at this stage. Of course, when we get a little bit more excited, I'll have to make a few, oh, shivers, don't bump her a candle. I'll have to make a few more of these stands so we can make, obviously, a bit more efficient than this, but still. Yeah, so I reckon I'm gonna have to make a few more of these stands, maybe make them so it's got four on the one stand and then another one next to that. I don't know how that'll work, but anyway, I reckon, 
considering that I've got these boxes laying around, I've got another old nuke box out the back there that's got a hole in it from the blooming nut of the, you know, the nut in the wood. No, it's not called a nut. It's called a knot, a knot. <laughs> it's a knot in the wood that's fallen out. So it's got to, that would actually be make another really good one. That'd give us what? Two, four, eight. Look at that, hell, my mass is pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I was just looking here, I think we better snip the bottom of these off and perhaps we can put them on a can, on an iron or something to get it really flat, I don't know, but anyway, we'll snip the bottom off. Oh, it just comes off. It just come off easy, but of course it would. <laughs> oh dear. And as far as I can figure out from the directions, we get some paper, um, like baking paper in a frying pan and we just basically put the candle in the bottom of that so it's nice and flat. But obviously it's going to be in a candle holder anyway, so it's not really going to matter, but we'll make it nice and flat on the bottom. And there you go. Hey presto, beeswax dipped candles. Even by the bush bee man no more. <laughs> of course, waste not, want not. We'll put this little bit back in here. We might have to put it back on the heat for the next lap. So if you want to get your hands on some bush bee man ham dips by me, well, maybe not by me, <laughs> might be done by my wife as well. Clip over to the website and check us out. Grab yourself a couple for your next dinner party. Tell you what, it's be something special.